So what is our vector? Our vector is the Stenocephalides filis, or commonly known as the cat flea. The cat flea is laterally flattened without wings and has three pairs of legs for jumping. The way to distinguish the cat flea is the presence of pronotal and genal combs. The first stage of the flea life cycle is the egg. Egg laying in females occurs 24 to 36 hours after a blood meal, usually in a warm, moist area that is near the host. The second stage is the larval stage. Then a cocoon forms, which is promoted by the third instar, and the pupal stage begins 18 hours after the formation of this cocoon. The fleas pupate for 19 to 24 days and then emerge from the cocoon as adults. The adult stage is the last stage of the flea life cycle. This is the only stage where blood feeding occurs. Hmm, just like us vampires. Fleas like to feed on blood. Hence the pun. Ha! Hmm, only adults like to blood feed. This is in response to carbon dioxide and fluoride vibrations emitted from the host, which attracts the flea and causes it to jump onto the host. The preferred host is the domesticated cat. The flea likes to live in the animal fur. The flea is more abundant in the warmer seasons where they can be found, both inside and outside the home. The flea is found most common in the US in areas with high human populations because this is where the domesticated cat mostly lives. <laughs> Fleas also like to live close to where you sleep. This sure does not give you nightmares. Humans are the susceptible host for the disease. Well that is just amazing. Whole individuals are susceptible to the disease regardless of age gender, or previous health complications. Is it me? Well, that's just great. Ugh. Well, I don't appreciate this. I've lived a long life. People are in high risk of getting infected if they are found in close proximity with the serval cat. The area of exposure is your skin. This is where the flea can latch onto and begin feeding. The most common locations for disease were California, Montana, and Washington State. Other locations were Nevada and Florida. Help! I'm a doctor! This guy's in shock! Other common symptoms, but not limited to, are high fever, chills, diarrhea, splenomegaly, anorexia, chest pain, blood tinge, sputum, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, respiratory failure, diaphoresis, hoarder spots, and shock. Hi, my name is Vicky Erlacrona, and I'm believed to be the first person that brought the Pacific Killer Disease to the U.S. from fleas that were inhabiting the several cats that I had brought in from Malawi, a country in southeastern Africa. Well, thank you, Vicky. We all appreciate that. The reservoir is the Phyllis catus, or also known as the domesticated cat. The domestic cat is found on every continent except Antarctica. Fun fact, New Zealand is the country with the highest cat ownership rate in the world. The domesticated cat is found in both rural and urban areas, normally as pets inside our homes. The genome size of this bacteria is 4,492.8 kilobase pairs. Genome sizes of greater than 170 kilobase pairs are generally classified as bacteria. The lab test results showed a gram-positive caucus in pairs, negative hydrolysis, and non-spore-forming bacteria. 
other lab test results included positive tests for indole, oxidase, citrate, methyl red, urease, catalase, and Moiler's arginine decarboxylase tests. From these lab results, we were able to determine the bacterial classification. This is from the domain bacteria, phylum firmicutes, class bacilli, order lactobacillus, family lactobacillaceae, genus pediococcus, and species P. schmeichus. The common name is the Pacific Killer Fever. It causes bacteremia in susceptible hosts, and the current mortality rate is 100%. The bacterium is transmitted to human hosts via the Stenocephalidus filis through blood feeding. Humans tend to get bitten indoors. Blood work and tissue sampling should be done in order to detect the presence of P. schmegas. Chest radiographs also tend to show extensive infiltrates, non-cardiogenic bilateral interstitial edema, and widened mediastinum without parenchymal infiltrates. The preliminary control plan had a 98% drop in flea abundance in areas where it was properly implemented. However, with this decrease in the flea population came with reports of pesticide poisonings among several animals and new cases have popped up in Washington, Newberry, Billings, and Los Angeles which had declared a state of emergency. Due to these negative outcomes, we have updated our final control plan to target all links in the disease cycle. The first method of control of the disease is through vaccination. Veterinarians will be required to administer a cat vaccine annually, especially in those areas where the cat flea is abundant. Further testing may need to be used to make sure that the vaccine is an effective control method. Humans will also be required to get vaccination once a year, especially if they're associated with the cat. This will target several links in the disease cycle, such as reservoir exposure to disease, the ability for the vector to pick up the disease from the reservoir. Susceptibility is decreased by an immune response, which triggers the release of antibodies to kill the pathogen. These antibodies are increased in numbers over time through an annual vaccine injection. Domesticated cats infested with fleas carrying the disease will also need to be put in isolation until the threat of the disease transmission is absent. Keeping the infested cats in isolation will prevent contact with flea vectors and will decrease the spread of the disease. Airport checks for pets carrying the infected fleas will also be conducted by taking blood sample tests and removing fleas. This is imperative to inhibit disease transmission to other geographical locations. Lastly, as a part of the new control plan to stop Pacific killer fever, topical medications will be used to decrease flea infestation on domesticated cats. In order for all of these control plans to be effectively implemented, the use of social media, television, and newspaper advertisements will be crucial in raising public awareness. The CDC is currently creating educational pamphlets on the safety and importance of the human and cat vaccines in stopping the spread of Pacific Killer Fever. Veterinarians will report all suspected and confirmed cases of P. Schmeichus infection to the CDC in order to track the spread of the disease. The etiology and risk factors of the disease will be made known to physicians across the nation so that they may be on the lookout for Pacific killer fever from their patients. We are also going to provide training and seminars for people that want to know more and to spread the general information to the public. It is very important and very imperative to do so. Airport checks will be a mandatory implementation with proper pet immunization records required. Failure to comply will result in an on-site blood screening and full flea check of the domesticated cat. Some at-home options for decreasing flea interactions will also be recommended. Vacuum the home at least once a week, steam clean the floor monthly, 
watch cat beddings or rest areas where the fleas are likely to inhabit, and perform professional exterminations in repeated infested areas. Topical creams will also be recommended with education on how to use them properly in order to decrease insecticide resistance. If you have symptoms relating to those described earlier for Pacific Killer Fever, please seek immediate medical attention right away. The CDC is expecting full eradication of Pacific Killer Fever within 6 to 10 months if all methods of control are properly implemented across the United States. This will require full support from both the general and medical communities. We are all in this together for this fight against the disease. Continued education for cat owners will be necessary in the future to prevent community protests so that they may understand the full benefits of our efforts to control the disease. Yes, uh, Mr. Doctor Sir, is there a possibility for uh, the vaccine to not be as effective as before? One of the greatest potential risks is pathogen resistance to the vaccine. If that's the case, a new vaccine will need to be formulated and tested. Reemergence of Pacific Killer Fever is a future possibility, which is why it is imperative that these protocols be implemented promptly and correctly over many months in order to ensure disease elimination. We hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And like my friend to my right here always says, stay healthy my friends. For more information about the Pacific Killer Fever, please visit our website at entomologicalmystery.weebly.com Thank you for watching.